when we think about Silurea, it, it seems to be common. It's common in, in surveys. And, but why do you think people don't recognize it so much? You think it's the patients don't bring it up or doctors and nurses uh, don't query about it enough because of time or other constraints? I think that's part of it. I think it's time. I think the average neurologic uh, recheck for a Parkinson's patient isn't long enough to address all these questions. And I think if you don't ask, the patients don't necessarily volunteer it. So if the patient is in your office and they're obviously drooling, you see a constant stream coming out, it's an easy pick, pick up. But a lot of physicians don't ask about celeria. And you have to ask, when you wake up, is the pillow wet? Uh, are you finding you have excessive saliva in your mouth? Are you having to wipe your mouth frequently? Is your speech gurgling at times? Are you coughing at night in bed? These are all questions that can cue you in because some patients have no anterior drooling. It's all posterior drooling. And maybe they've had a history of aspiration pneumonia. Maybe uh, they just cough at night in bed. And those are the only clues that you'll have. When do you start asking about silaria? Is, is this a question we should ask from the diagnosis forward, or do we wait until they're having motor fluctuations? When were the Parkinson's patients that were most likely to have a return on asking that question? And Well, obviously, it's more common as the disease progresses, uh, and people who are early and mild, they're probably not having problems, but I've seen the exception. I've seen patients who are relatively mild mm -hmm. and early, yet they have salaria. Um, a part of my clinical exam, uh, at least once a year, I go through the UPRS part two with patients. And that's one of the questions is you ask about, are you drooling? And then you try to quantify it. So it's part of my routine exam. And every patient is asked that at least once a year, if I see them every six months, I do every other visit. But I understand that most physicians don't do a full UPRS as part of their exam. So at some point, it should be important to, to ask the patient about drooling particularly if, if there's a history of swallowing or, or past history of pneumonia. Is there a one or two screening questions that we could suggest to people, you know, listening and wanting to learn more about salaria uh, that may capture most of the patients? Because they may not have time to ask all the list. Uh, I guess I would ask, is the pillow wet when you wake up? That can pick up a fairly earlier uh, salaria. And do you find yourself drooling? Are there any scales or tools or ways that people can follow this over time, especially if you're thinking about treating it to sort of know if the treatment's effective or not? You know, there, there's quite a few scales that have been developed, but a lot of them were developed for a pediatric population because drooling is also very common uh, in uh, children uh, with intellectual disabilities and in children with cerebral palsy, they see it. And so a lot of these apply more to kids. Um, for adults, there, there are a few scales, um, I, but I actually like the one for Parkinson's. That's the questions in the UPDRS part two. Uh, no drooling, excessive saliva in the mouth. Uh, is the pillow wet at night? Uh, is there drooling during the day? And then is the clothing becoming wet? Mm -hmm. And I use that as my four point scale. And not just for patients, we have to ask our, their caregivers and families as well, because sometimes a patient may not even be so aware that the saliva right. is evident, and it may be the family or the caregivers that are uh, seeing it and, and knowing how frequent it is. You have that all the time. You ask the patient, are you drooling? And they say no, and the caregiver is next to them, and they're shaking their head yes.